Welcome. I'd like to thank everyone who's currently logged in and joining. Um, we're going to give you a few more minutes for others to join, um, and then I'll go ahead and get started. I'm going to go ahead and get started now that's a little bit past uh, noon here. Um, I expect others will be joining here momentarily. Hi, my name is Matt Malanga, Chief Marketing Officer at NewsCred. Today I'm here with Scott Brinker, founder and editor of Chief MarTech, and also well known for his MarTech Landscape Super Graphic. Welcome, Scott. Yeah, great to be here with you, Matt. Hi, everyone. Today we're going to be talking about how to orchestrate MarTech Harmony the who, the what, the why and how behind better marketing operations. In the agenda, we're gonna cover four topics. The first topic will be roles of the marketing technologist, which Scott will cover. He's done some very interesting research, which I think you'll find enlightening. I'll then cover the top marketing challenges of 2020. This is based on research conducted by Circan Research earlier in the year. You'll find that very interesting and very relevant to marketing technology. Scott then will continue with blending processes and technology to achieve MarTech harmony. And then finally, we'll conclude with some questions and answers. Scott, please take it away. Great, uh, thanks Matt. So, uh, hi everyone. Uh, excited to uh, have a uh, digital uh, connection together here. I uh, hope you're all doing uh, well under current circumstances. Um, it is an amazing time to be in marketing, but I'd argue it's an even more amazing time to be in marketing operations. You know, marketing operations has gone through this incredible renaissance over the past decade. I mean, years ago, marketing operations was kind of this little niche within the marketing department. Uh, I remember one analyst once referred to it as the island of misfit toys. Oh, yeah, they'll take care of this database or they'll take care of, you know, uh, some of this reporting. But over this past decade, as marketing technology has really blossomed uh, and become central to the execution of marketing as we know it, uh, attracting, engaging, delighting customers in all these digital channels or channels that are certainly supported by digital technologies. And in that revolution that has happened, it's the marketing operations team that has really become the pillar of the marketing organization running that stack and getting it successfully applied to the delivery of all these great marketing campaigns and programs and touch points that we're now running. So a term that often gets used for people who are able to blend this mix of marketing experience, marketing know-how, marketing uh, uh, just uh, really a marketing mindset but blending that with a certain technical savvy, uh, affluence of working with these digital tools. Uh, in some cases, yeah, even, even a deeper way of thinking about technology management as part of the tool for executing modern marketing. And so the, these, these hybrids, these blends of, you know, people who have both marketing and technology skills have become known as marketing technologists. Well, who are marketing technologists? What are they focused on? How do they execute on their work? And, and why do these roles matter? So this is a question near and dear to my heart. Uh, and earlier this year, we did a pretty comprehensive study of the different kinds of roles of marketing technologists. And in our research, we found that there were actually four, well, really five personas of different kinds of marketing technologists. Really, again, more of these different roles where someone might apply that blend of marketing and tech savvy. Uh, and so these four roles, five roles, are um, 
the maestro. Uh, so this is the, the marketing and technology operations leader. If you work in marketing operations, you are probably doing this role. Uh, you know, we'll go into a little bit more detail about uh, you know, the job responsibilities of these roles. Um, you know, we have a ton of people who are really just now tech savvy marketers. Right? They might think of themselves as marketing technologists in the sense that they can wield you know, uh, a, a wide variety of marketing tools to be able to execute their vision. You know, but the real mission is actually delivering campaigns and programs and engagements with their audience. We also have a set of people I call makers uh, in the marketing world because, well, as you might imagine, they actually make things. Uh, these are marketing developers, the folks who build websites or, you know, build our apps, whether they're mobile apps that face customers or sometimes even workflow-based apps that, you know, we use internally. And then a fourth one is this role of a modeler which is really about someone who's a specialist in data and analytics. And I'll show you how these four relate to each other. One of the reasons I drew this as an interconnected uh, pyramid is because, you know, in a healthy marketing organization, you have people wearing all of these hats working together. And then very often it's the, the manager role, the marketing tech savvy manager sitting above this who helps really conduct uh, the way these teams work together. So I want to dive into this a little bit more. Um, one of the ways, I, I, I love two by twos, right? If, if you can put in a two by two, you can ex explain anything. Uh, quantum mechanics, I'm sure there's a two by two out there somewhere. Um, so if we think of marketing technologists and these four primary roles along a two by two, the axes are on the X axis, left to right, an internal orientation, to an external orientation. And so roles that are, have an internal orientation are really focused on serving stakeholders inside the company, inside the organization. Whereas the external orientation is very much focused on directly touching and serving prospects and customers. Uh, you know, and again, both these roles, you know, there's a blend between them. Uh, and then on the y-axis, we can also look at, you know, some roles have more of a process orientation. They're really focused on, okay, how do, we, how do we think of a customer journey or how do we think about a workflow inside our organization? And then on the other side of the y-axis is more of a technology orientation. You know, folks are really leveraging the technology for either building uh, applications uh, or going much deeper uh, with what's possible with data science and data analysis. You know, and so these these four roles, we can map them on this two by two, right? You know, the, the brand demand builders, the tech savvy marketers, uh, you know, if you're a marketing manager or a growth marketer, you know, this, this quadrant is probably your primary domain. Uh, you know, on a more internal orientation, you have marketing operations leaders, these operations orchestrators, the CRM and marketing automation administrators. On more of the technology side, this is where, you know, marketing makers, uh, the web and app developers, to a certain degree, even this, this new range of citizen developers, uh, if you've heard that term before, you know, are making things that very much impact the experience of prospects and customers. Uh, and then on these more internal orientation and technology, that's really where, yeah, these analytics architects, uh, marketing analysts, data scientists, data engineers thrive. I apologize, by the way, for all the alliteration, like, you know, maestro, marketer, maker, modeler. I, what can I say? Um, all right, so you got a sense of what these uh, you know, four main roles are. Let's, let's do a quick poll. I mean, if you're gonna pick one of those four, you know, as like the one you, the one you feel the greatest affinity towards, which would it be? I'll uh, give you a moment here to think through that. Da, na, 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 na. Uh, all right, sorry for that distraction. Um, all right, operations orchestrator, brand demand builder, analytics architect, marketing maker, and 
the answers are ooh, wow this is a great uh, great mix of folks attending uh, this uh, session uh 27 percent uh the operations orchestrator 42 percent brand demand builders 13 percent analytics architects and 19 percent marketing makers uh very cool very cool all right so Let's let's dig a little bit deeper here into you know you get a sense of what these roles are at a high level, but you know what's the kind of work that they do, and I think for today I want to focus in particular on the process orientation that we see with operations orchestrators and brand demand builders. So one of the things we did in our Martech career study was really look at the kinds of activities uh, you know that each of these roles uh, spend spend their days doing you know and so this is where you start to see the differentiation between tech savvy marketers and then actual marketing operations professionals tech savvy marketers i mean the number one thing they spend their time doing is they should is actually running campaigns running marketing programs they're leveraging tools to do that uh, you know 76 percent will operate MarTech tools as an administrator, but it's very much in the service of delivering those campaigns. I also think it's pretty cool that 78% of them also say that training and supporting other marketers on how to use the tools uh, that they've learned uh, is a part of their mission. I think that's a really, it, it speaks to the power of, uh, you know, environments that really allow peer-to-peer, -peer, uh, you know, learning and knowledge sharing. But then when you look at the operations orchestrators, these maestros, it's a really different mix, right? I mean, 91% say their number one responsibility there is uh, workflow and process. This is the underlying operating system that is running the marketing department. At the same level, 91% see their role of training and supporting the rest of the marketing department to take advantage of this technology and process. Uh, this is very much the uh, the mission of like marketing enablement uh, within the marketing operations team. Of course, they operate many of these tools. Uh, they have a, a primary responsibility for integrating these tools together. But these are also the folks, 71%, who take responsibility for architecting the overall MarTech stack. And so again, you get the sense that they're, you know, I mean, each of these roles has their own unique capabilities they bring but it's really the harmony of these coming together, which is where the power of the modern marketing organization comes from. So let's take a look at some of their challenges. Matt, do you want to take this uh, over? Really quick, Scott, could you go back one slide? Absolutely. So I, I mean, first of all, I commend you on this ability to lay out something as complicated as this into a simple two by two, or four by four or two by two. Um, what's interesting here is why I relate to this so much is having been a leader at like BMC Software and at Citrix and having marketing operations report into me, I completely understand these personas. Um, they make perfect sense to me. So your maestros would be typically your marketing ops leaders. Um, typically, I would set up shared service centers around Eloquar Marketo, or our website. Um, and those would be a lot of our marketers. They'd have SLAs. They'd be executing externally. On that maker, in that maker quadrant, um, yeah, I'd have the web developers helping with form development, new apps development. And of course, the modelers would be those people who are helping me get insights into how marketing is working within a function or across the function, um, as well as managing the budget and finances and making sure that we're able to report on those as well. So this is really fantastic, and I appreciate you sharing that with us. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Really glad it resonates with your experience. So as a way of background, NewsCred commissioned Circuit Research to help us gain some really incredible insights into overall, like, what are the top challenges marketers are facing in 2020? And we've done research around uh, the coronavirus. We've looked at pain specific pain points. And I think you'll find this incredibly relevant to marketing ops, as well as the other kind of marketing ops type personas. Um, so all of those functions were included in the survey. Um, we targeted directors and above, so we really focused on kind of the leaders within these organizations. And this research is really focused on large enterprise companies. 
Next slide, please. So let, me, let me walk you through this circuit research. The first thing challenge we noticed is that there's this general notion of visibility or that lack thereof. We found that in the survey results, 68% of the marketers have difficulty creating, managing, sharing, and updating marketing plans, which again, I can completely relate to. The larger the organization, the higher the coordination costs, the more difficult it is to actually see what's going on. And a big part of this is the fact that 80% plus of those people who participate in this survey lack a single unified calendar to visualize all their marketing and content development, as well as the publishing of it. Directly related to visibility, the survey kind of called out this lack of control. In fact, 73% indicated they have poor control over resources, bandwidth, and competing priorities. Again, if you've managed a large like shared service center, like a web team or a marketing automation team, constantly you're being um, peppered with requests from different functions or outside even the marketing organization. Be able to prioritize these requests, manage these requests is, is very difficult. And another 50% said they're unable to manage the approved marketing budget against the plan. So again, have this real-time visibility into is their budget, uh, making sure that the requests are coming in, they're approved in a timely manner so campaigns can be executed. A lot of marketers still struggle with this. Next slide, please. The third top challenge that a lot of marketers face around execution, and maybe perhaps the most startling fact out of this entire research was, the, was this notion of only 25% of marketers' time is actually spent on creating campaign assets and content. And what's interesting is we kind of dug deeper and make sure that as we lined it up to these different personas, we looked at even from a marketer's perspective, those who are responsible for creating and executing campaigns and content. And so the real question is, where does that other 75% of the time go? And in the survey, we also asked those questions. And quite frankly, they go to a lot of email back and forth. They go to um, a lot of meetings, planning meetings, coordination meetings, status meetings. The list goes on and on where the other amount of their time is spent. We also found that 74% of marketers say it takes 12 weeks or more to launch a single campaign. Now, I was actually startled by this number as well. So you're talking roughly three months to get a full campaign off the ground. But it's true. Um, and over 100 respondents, all director and above, three months or thereabouts tends to be where it takes to actually build a campaign. Personally, I really, really would refer to this as being like agile. It seems quite lengthy to me. The fourth, and maybe perhaps one of the most relevant challenges is around measurement. 75% of marketers are unable to measure the marketing team performance operationally. So if you're in like a shared service center, like a creative services team, our marketing automation team, where are my resources? Where are the bottlenecks? How productive are they? All those questions are very relevant. Another 82% of marketing leaders are unable to attribute campaign or content activity to revenue. Now, we also ask a, a different survey, what are the top initiatives for 2020? And be able to quantifiably or qualify how marketing is performing is definitely a top C-level, VP, director level um, initiative for 2020. And clearly it's one of their top challenges as well. Next slide, please. So let me just kind of boil this up into like what we believe are the top operational challenges. Creating a suboptimal performance within marketing. I think we, you know, we could touch on like this lack of cross team visibility. You know, what's interesting about marketing versus like sales or support is sales and support are more or less similar roles, irrespective of who you are. But with the marketing, it's actually a collective team of specialists. And so cross team visibility, cross team coordination, the ability to have operational control over these campaigns, 
the ability to measure not only the performance of the output, the performance of the input, and be able to effectively manage broken processes and best tools are what we believe are the underlying factors that lead to those top challenges. Next slide, please. Well, I think that's uh, the handoff to me then, uh, Matt. Um, so I think one of my, my takeaways from this, uh, when I was going through this data with you from CERC and research, you know, is those four primary challenges of like visibility, control, execution, and measurement. These really are responsibilities where certainly marketing technologists as a whole can uh, impact the outcomes. But I think in particular, these marketing operations leaders, the, the operations orchestrators, the maestros, you know, these really become primary responsibilities for them to address. And, you know, I mean, obviously I'm a big advocate of MarTech, marketing technology, but I think it's really important to recognize that while technology can certainly help uh, in solving these challenges, it is actually, <laughs> as in all things, right, there's this uh, intersection between technology, people, and process that really make this work. And so if we just go back to, uh, you know, the set of responsibilities that we saw, you know, operations orchestrators, these marketing ops leaders having, I find it really fascinating how they actually map across all three vertices of that people process technology triangle, right? I mean, there's certainly the technology side of this, uh, you know, marketing operations leaders are generally responsible for researching MarTech, architecting the MarTech stack, integrating those tools together. But that's just one piece. It's then as they start to get into this mission of operating MarTech, that they really get more into the process. You know, again, really this thing of the, the, the control and the execution uh, of marketing operations. So designing and managing internal workflows and processes. And then ultimately, it's enabling the rest of the marketing organization to harness these capabilities, to train and support marketing staff on using MarTech, you know, and being able to execute all three vertices of this people process triangle, uh, people process technology triangle, uh, is really the secret to being able to address the challenges of visibility, control, execution, and measurement. Now, of course, you know, uh, uh, super excited about marketing technology and, you know, marketing operations orchestrators is an important role within that. You know, of course, this is one piece of a much larger marketing organization. Uh, one of the ways I visualize this is it's almost like a pyramid. You could turn this 90 degrees where, I mean, ultimately marketing leadership and strategy, you know, sets the vision, sets that direction in which you're headed. There's a translation in marketing technology leadership to, okay, how do we provide the capabilities to deliver on that, the infrastructure to be able to deliver on that, which are these different marketing technologist roles. But then they're very much serving the overall marketing organization, empowering everyone in marketing, for that matter, empowering people who have an influence on marketing in our organization outside the department in sales and customer success. And then ultimately, right, at every great company, everyone is focused on how do we leverage all of this to serve customers. So it's a really exciting time to be working in marketing operations, uh, whether you're directly leading that function or collaborating with it as one of these other MarTech roles. So just a summary of some of, uh, you know, what we've covered here so far, right? So the who, what, how and why. I hope that two by two quadrant of different marketing technologist roles gives you a sense of, in particular, what marketing operations is able to do relative to the others, but again, how they all complement each other in a rich marketing technology uh, uh, capability to, to evaluate how your particular function uh, fits in you know, what the successful, you know, for any successful go-to-market campaign, right? It's not just the campaign concept, but it's how do we actually deliver that, the execution and measurement and control. And then once you recognize that, okay, you've got these different specialist marketing technologist roles, you also appreciate that across the MarTech stack, 
you will have different tools to really support each one of those roles. Uh, you know, certainly the broader marketing tech infrastructure is very much run by marketing operations, but right there also the folks are leveraging, you know, even more workflow capabilities. The analytics architects are leveraging business intelligence tools. You know, the, uh, the makers are leveraging, you know, right, our digital experience platforms, you know, and the brand demand managers, well, they're leveraging everything they can to be able to deliver, you know, on great creative marketing campaigns and programs. So uh, Matt, do you want to give folks a little bit of a perspective on how this relates to what uh, NewsGrad's perspective is on uh, blending process and tech? Absolutely. So I'm going to sp sprint through this section because um, I'm having some really good Q&As come in. Um, there's also some really nice Q&As um, sent prior to this. So I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this section, but um, that'll leave us enough time to actually answer the uh, question. So. Let's just dive right into this because here's the reality of the modern marketing tech. And again, this is all based on CERC and research, which is it's crazy, but 78% of marketers use five or more tools to plan, manage, and execute their campaigns. That's probably a root cause for some of this inefficiency. In fact, if you were to overlay like email and point collaboration tools and instant messaging, um, I, I think that number could easily be 10 plus. Interestingly enough, 87% of marketers also said it would be beneficial to have a single tool to manage all their marketing activities. And this is more than just marketing activities. We're talking about campaigns, content production, visibility into the, the budget. Um, so I, I think there's a lot here that are making things more difficult as I would argue that the MarTech landscape, the 8,000 plus vendors hasn't matured to a point where there's consolidation in a single tool yet that can manage a lot of this and alleviate some of the current challenges that we see. Next slide. The way we're thinking about here at NewsCred is, you know, marketing work management, you know, purpose-built software to manage the entire marketing process. We believe you need a single source of truth, certainly around campaigns and content. We believe that what you build has to have a lot of interoperability, the ability to integrate with lots of different tools. So we would never suggest to get rid of like your favorite tools for social or web. Rather, we believe that there should be tight integrations into those tools, two-way integrations. At the center of what we believe in is like having performance of being able to measure the success of campaigns and content. We believe in a tool that should be easy to use, make it easy to collaborate. And of course, be powered by the people. Next slide. We look at it in order to achieve this visibility, this control, this faster execution. It's about being able to put a tool in place that for the core marketing work, which is planning, prioritization, budgeting, creating content, you know, building campaigns, all that collaboration that happens in the process of building content, getting approvals, should be easy, as well as the distribution of it out to your favorite tools, your favorite channels, whether it's social, whether it's web. And of course, the process wouldn't be complete without visibility into what's working, what's not. Not just from a campaign and content perspective, but also in terms of like internal measurements, like people performance utilization. Next slide. And so, in short, and this is my last slide, I promise, is the way we're thinking about this is real-time campaigns and editorial calendars. We believe that it should be a tool for strategic planning and budgeting, a place where you can collaborate, share creative briefs, do con content editing. A central piece of how we think about this is there would be no tool that you could be like your single place to go without having tight integrations and to those other parts of the MarTech stack. And we believe in the ability to have end-to-end -end performance around your content and campaigns. With that said, let's talk about q and I've had some good questions come in. I have a few that were already sent to me. Um, so some of these look like Scott um, are probably right down like your, your area of expertise. So 
the first one one question that came up um, prior to this uh, webinar being kicked off is do you how do you feel about marketing and operations as a strategic function or enabler of the overall marketing function how do you think about that um, and how and do you see it like I'm adding some more into this but do you see this like becoming more and more important as marketing teams evolve? Oh, absolutely. Uh, I mean, marketing operations has definitely gone from, again, what was maybe a decade or two decades ago, certainly like more of a uh, ancillary function of like, oh, well, here's something nobody else in marketing wants to do. Maybe the marketing operations team can do it for us um, to something that, yeah, I mean, marketing does not work without marketing operations at this point. I mean, I think one, one, maybe kind of crazy uh, metaphor for this would be like, okay, marketing is, you know, trying to host an amazing party, you know, at your house, right? Like uh, I want to invite all these people. They want to be excited to come. I want to get them through the door, convert them. You know, when they're there, they should have an amazing time, the, you know, great experience. Um, so imagine trying to do that without plumbing or electricity, or basically any of the aspect of the infrastructure, you know, like walls to the house, things like this. I mean, marketing operations creates the infrastructure around which that whole marketing experience is now built in a digital world, you know? And so certainly, uh, you know, they're, they're following the lead of the larger marketing strategy and developing the capabilities to support that. But at the same time, it's by what they're able to build, being the architects, you know, of these marketing uh, capabilities, that they also sort of help inform and inspire strategy at the higher level too. So yeah, I, I can't think of a more strategic function in marketing now than marketing operations. Uh, thank you, Scott. So uh, there's some other really nice questions coming in um, live. So let's hit some of the live ones. Um, so one is from John. Um, I won't mention any last name for PII purposes. Um, the question is, is so if the three month time frame to launch a campaign is unacceptable, what do you believe is the time frame should be? Um, yeah, so that's, a, that, I'm gonna answer this one if you don't mind, Scott. So um, to answer John's question, um, News Cred basically uses our own product. Um, we use it for planning, we use it for budgeting, we use it for collaboration and execution. I hold my team accountable for one month or less on campaign execution. Now, I'm not going to say that's the right goal for every organization, but as a point of fact, when COVID struck, we obviously ran a survey, again, with Circ and Research, to really understand what that impact was to COVID. Our ability to put together the survey, execute the survey, tabulate the results, produce the content, run the webinar, generate leads, um, promote that within multiple channels like the web or blog, promote it on social media, um, push it into um, online channels like content syndication, we were able to accomplish all that in under a month. And I'm not sure that I could say with confidence we could have done it without a really solid marketing work management tool to help us have that visibility and control and be able to quickly shift the team's priority, uh, the marketing team's priority to, to really focus on that particular campaign. Um, I hope that answered the question. Here's a couple other really great ones that have come in. Um, this one's coming in from, this one came in from Fred. How is, this is gonna be for you, Scott. How is the MarTech landscape, vast array of solutions supporting this? Second question, are we seeing any significant trends? And lastly, and with the per personas of marketing technology, et cetera, are there any significant skill gaps we need to address? Wow. All right. Yeah, that's a great multi-part question. I have one question for you in 27 parts. Um, all right. Uh, sounds, like, sounds, sounds like, sounds like, sounds like my circuit research surveys. <laughs> um, okay. So I, I, I guess, yeah, let me make sure I've got this down. So the first piece is like how the MarTech landscape 
uh, all these different vendors and solutions that are out there are really supporting uh, this mission of harmony. Uh, and I think uh, I, I've written a lot about this, uh, particularly recently uh, around trying to explain like with this latest MarTech landscape, we have like 8,000 solutions on it. Like what is going on? And I think one of the things that's changing is the relationship between tools in that landscape. Like once upon a time, not too many years ago, right? Most of these tools really were independent of each other. Um, you know, just uh, this, this incredibly uh, fast, you know, rush to market of, you know, all these innovative ideas and everyone buying for the way to, you know, build their own relationships, which is great, but challenging for marketers to get all these tools integrated together. And I think what you've steadily seen over the past few years is more of a shift towards platform ecosystems. This idea of, you know, one of the responsibilities of both major marketing platforms and individual tools on that landscape is to take on the responsibility of integrating with each other so that the marketer doesn't have to do all that uh, work themselves. You know, and so I think when you look at it that way, now things start to get a lot more exciting because, you know, as a operations orchestrator, right, you know, you are thinking about how you assemble your stack. Hopefully your first and foremost thought is what are the capabilities I need? And then secondarily, the process of, oh, well, how do I get things that integrate together? Um, <laughs> that's not all on your shoulders to make that happen. Um, all right. So that was part one. Um, I think, uh, you I know, think you, you hit the trends as well. Got it. Um, and so like skills, right? What are the skills that are missing? Exactly. Significant skill gaps that you think need to be addressed within the marketing technologist. You know, so uh, what was that uh, claim about, you know, the future is already here. It's just not evenly distributed. I think it's a lot like that in marketing technology teams is, you know, if you look at that, you know, two by two quadrant of these different marketing technology roles. Um, I think in most organizations, you typically don't have a lot of strength in all four of those quadrants, right? It might be that, you know, depending on the maturity or the journey a particular marketing organization is in, they might be strong in one or they might be strong in two of them, but they might be weaker in one of the others. You know, and so I don't think it's like a whole net new set of skills for the industry as a whole, but I think you as a marketing leader definitely want to think about how do you fill out that portfolio of talents and skills within your team to make sure you do have people who can wear the hats of leading each one of those four primary quadrants. Yeah, that, that, that I think is a great summary. Um, and, and personally, I think, and this is my perspective, this is Matt's perspective, but I, I would add that I think the challenge not necessarily is in skills, rather than how do you bring all of this together in a collaborative way, all the different parts of the tech stack. So I think change management, organizational change management is very important. I think as I thought about what Scott was presenting, this notion of multiple functions training, you know, I think this is part of the solution actually, which is train the trainer. And then, you know, with marketing ops, the maestro is gonna roll it out at a kind of like a company-wide level, then on like a departmental level, or maybe even at like a shared service level, there becomes people who are experts that then train specific to what they need to accomplish. Um, so I also see that as like a, as an opportunity and both a challenge. Um, we're running a little short on time. There's about seven minutes left before we wrap this up. I have a ton of other questions. So let me jump to a few more of these. Um, this one came in from Amy and she claims to be a, a maker, which is great. Makers are fun. That's a fun job. Um, I'm most interested in tools that help with channel design, creative brief creation, messaging, copy, and scheduling. What insights can you offer on that front? So, Scott, I'll let you tackle that one first, and I'll give you my opinion. Yeah, I think you might even have some very specific <laughs> recommendations there, Matt. Uh, <laughs> it's a great question. Um, 
Yeah, I mean, I think this is like if you dive into the MarTech landscape, and by the way, one of the things we did this year was, um, you know, in addition to publishing that graphic, which is, you know, maybe a nice piece of art, but uh, it's actually very hard to like use the graphic, like to like figure out what's going on there. Um, so we also published a, a database of all the uh, marketing technology vendors there. Um, and so, uh, yeah, it's on martech5000.com. And so you can go there and you can actually, you know, uh, it's like an Airtable type interface. So you can zoom in and say, okay, well, I want to see all the different tools. They're available for things like, you know, content marketing management. Um, there's also a bunch of, you know, categories around the tools we use for things like, you know, budgeting and marketing resource management and uh, collaboration, uh, even things like agile marketing and, you know, tools specifically designed to help manage that. Um, so the good news is there's a, there's a ton of innovation uh, happening in this space on uh, helping empower not just individual makers, but yeah, whole teams of makers and the way they uh, work with the broader marketing org. Uh, but I mean, I know Matt, you have a lot of experience in this particular category. Yeah, so I'll, I'll just hit this top level, which is, you know, I think most of you are aware that, you know, NewsCred's been focused on kind of content at the core of where we started. Um, three years in a row, we've been the leader in the Gartner Magic Quadrant. So I, I feel quite confident that I can talk to this in a very credible way. And the essence of what we're now referring to is our marketing work management tool you know, has a very specific use case around the content marketing teams. Um, that's where it was engendered from. Um, we've since expanded it to exclude, include more than just what's needed for content marketers or people who are creating campaigns. But the tools, like tools that are in the category of content marketing platforms are all designed to basically help with creative brief, creative brief creation and sharing, being able to build copy, being able to have people collaborate on that copy, um, edit that copy, give feedback, um, to schedule it, to, you know, to be able to publish it, um, to give you visibility into the counter so you know what's on schedule, what's not, to be able to dive deep into like what's being produced to see if anything's bottlenecked. Um, so I would encourage anyone if they're, if, you know, if there if is a content use case or maybe a shared center or use case, I would encourage you to um, research um, the Gartner Magic Quadrant um, content marketing platform. In fact, if you Google it, you'll probably see an ad for NewsCred. Um, we give it away for free. There's, I promise there's no annoying forms to complete. Um, so feel free to just type that into Google, um, download the uh, Gartner report, and um, yeah, that's on us. Okay, next question. Um, Scott, this will probably be the last one. Um, so I'm going to try to pick a good one here. Um, there's, they're all good, by the way. I'm going to pick one that I personally like. Um, what would be a good approach to keeping innovation in your MarTech stack? Um, that is, how do you be proactive rather than reactive? Oh, I love this question. Um... So the, the short answer is uh, I, I would Google something uh, called uh, pace layering. Uh, yeah, uh, I wrote an article about this on Chief Martech, uh, but the original source of this idea is from Gartner. And it's this idea that not all technology should be managed the same way. Uh, they recommend uh, you know, three layers of technology, systems of record, which are like these foundational infrastructure capabilities. You want them to be very stable. You don't want them to change very often. You know, and then there's layers you build on top of that that are specific to your business. And even something at the layer at the top, what Gartner called systems of innovation. And essentially all this boils down to saying, okay, listen, I want a very stable foundation to my MarTech stack. But part of what I want to build into the stack and sort of my overall operating process with the stack is the ability to continually experiment in a lightweight way 
with new products that I think are relevant uh, to my customer experience and to be able to run, you know, these lightweight pilot programs uh, with the expectation that, right, when you run experiments, you try pilots, you try new things, a number of them aren't going to work. And that's why you sort of structurally design it that you can run those tests relatively inexpensively and, uh, you know, with minimal disruption, you know, to your primary infrastructure. But it's that same way where every now and again, that gives you the ability to experiment with new things that are coming out, that are changing the game, new innovations that can give you capabilities that are competitive advantage, uh, you know, over others in your industry. Uh, and I think sort of building that in without letting it take over your whole stack uh, is a, a really powerful uh, way that operations orchestrators uh, you know, can lead their companies forward. Thank you, Scott. And unfortunately, we're out of time. First and foremost, I want to thank everyone who joined today. Um, I hope you found this very useful. Um, we'll do our best job to answer some of these questions via email to you. Um, thank you, Scott, obviously, for taking your time out of your busy schedule to join us. Um, and I hope everyone has a wonderful and safe day. Take care.